Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to yet another masterclass. I know it's been a while since we did the last class and uh, I apologize, but I had to just take some time off. This whole hair situation is like really getting out of hand and I'm now really excited to be coming back to the masterclasses full force. I really appreciated all your comments and your enthusiasm about the classes. I got a lot of messages from you guys and uh, yeah, I'm trying to answer as many questions as I can. Today we're going to start with another video where I react to your submissions. Um, as you know, you can upload your videos to YouTube with the hashtag Moser Masterclass and chances are that I'm going to watch it, have a few tips here and there for you and for sure um, I enjoy all the things that you're sending me. And here's our first video. Hi Mr. Moser, my name is Bernardo and I'm from Portugal. I'm a huge fan of your playing and I was wondering if you could give me some tips about my speakout. Bernardo, thank you very much for sending your video. Great stuff. I do have a couple of tips for you. Throughout the video, I feel like your shoulder is very high up and you're trying to create a faster motion by tensing up the upper part of your arm. And I think that leads to, you know, some tension and in the long run, maybe some pain. So I would try to avoid that. Um, but actually just, you know, having this part relax and just working out of your wrist and your fingers. I do think that a big part of spiccato is not only in uh, the right hand but also in right hand left hand coordination and I feel that the coordination between uh, your right hand and your left hand is sometimes getting lost and then although you're having good spiccato in the right hand and you're playing all the notes in the left hand because you're not having full coordination it sounds a little bit muddled and so it is always good to come up with meeting points between the right hand and the left hand so let's say um, let's make the meeting point the fourth finger So that whenever you play the fourth finger, you make sure that you give an extra impulse in the bow. Now, of course, we don't want to have a lot of accents throughout. And maybe you want to have a more even line. Uh, so you don't want it to sound... And we don't want that, but maybe you want a more uh, long approach. So it is more of a mental meeting point between fourth finger and the bow rather than doing accents and maybe also doing something with your head. So none of that business. And always remember, am I doing shifts with the uh, down bow or with the up bow? Now it's a down bow for um, the upward shift and a down bow for the downward shift and down bow for the string change. Yeah. So all of these are uh, down bow. Now let's talk about the spiccato itself. Spiccato is a bow stroke that starts from the string. It is not a bow stroke that comes from above, but actually starts on the string. And when I practice um, a piece like this slowly, or when I practice Elgar Concerto, second movement slowly, I do almost like a martellato bowing on the string. And once I uh, speed that up, the bow, at least in this case, starts to bounce by itself. I, actually, the bow never leaves the string, but it sounds, it sounds like spiccato. What does help in order for the bow to have an inner bounce is to take the tip of the bow slightly down. Yeah, so I'm angling my bow just to give a little bit more weight to the bow tip. Yeah, so uh, what I see in your video that sometimes your bow is going a little bit upwards this way, but we want the tip to face south. Yeah. 
which also means that you are taking the wrist up just a little bit. And I think the, the difference is, is quite audible when you have the tip up. It's not really bouncing a lot, but as soon as I turn the bow, it starts to bounce quite a lot. Just a couple of degrees will help the bow to take flight. I hope this was helpful. We're moving on to the next one. Hi Johannes, I'm Claire. And recently I've been learning the opening of Prokofiev Symphonia Concertant. And a lot of the times I don't really know what the musical line is or where to go or the different colors. excited that you're doing this. Claire, thank you very much for sharing your video. I think uh, this is already pretty fantastic, uh, if you ask me. Um, I do want to answer your questions about colors and phrasing and where the phrase is going. Um, the questions you ask come from a deep understanding of Central European music, like from Beethoven, you know, what are the phrases? from Bach, what are uh, the harmonic uh, relationships, or maybe you've been working on Debussy and Poulenc and you ask questions about color. And I think when it comes to Russian music of the early to mid 20th century, uh, we need to think of the players that were active at that time. Um, namely, of course, Mrs. Lafrosopovich. In, Rus in the Russian understanding of music, at least that is how it was taught to me, it is not so much about making a nice phrase, but it is about how relentlessly can you go forward. So when you play this opening, I would suggest that your only thought is forward, 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 yeah? because there is no way back, yeah? Um, and that sounds a little bit simple-minded and uh, maybe also simplifying it a little bit. But if I had any criticism of your already really great playing, it is that you are trying to make a shape that reminds me more of something that you would do in German or French music. Uh, so maybe, uh, you know, a, a phrase that is painted in a, in, a, in a very fine way, and you do that masterfully. You also see that in the way how Prokofiev uh, makes the bowing lines, who's, which seem impossibly long at times, especially given the intensity and sheer volume of sound that you're going for. That already teaches you about the sound. So if, if you have an impossible situation, you will try your utmost to, to go through it. <laughs> Yeah? And almost think, like when you come here, ah, you think this is loud, I'm still going to do a crescendo. Outgrowing yourself, almost. And I think that was the, one of the biggest fascinations with Rostropovich, not only at this time, but also for us now, is that he was able to transcend being a pure cello player, but actually he was able to propel his music and himself and subsequently his listeners into stratosphere through the pure energy and also the expansion of his playing. So yes, if you want to come closer to this music, I think expanding all of these parameters uh, rather than finding uh, where these phrases end and how you would shape those phrases um, is, is going to be helpful. <laughs>
Diego, thank you very much. Great playing. Uh, I want to give you a couple of pointers with this piece that I love very much. Um, first of all, the first four notes are not relating to D as C H, as a lot of people say, but actually they are just showing us two harmonies. The first harmony is F flat minor. <laughs> And then we have E flat major. Yeah. So you need to make sure that your intonation is very clean so that I understand this harmony. You just need to make sure that your intonation is absolutely pure um, for those first four notes. Now, one thing I really don't like, and I know a lot of my famous colleagues are doing this. All the notes have a dash and a dot, and that's why, in my opinion, all those notes need to be played exactly at the same length and the same articulation, just like a drum. Chuck, 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 chuck. very dry and because the danger that happens when you do that it sounds just a little bit like a like a dancing bear and you want to avoid that you want to be absolutely strict in this music and relentless yeah we were talking about uh, being relentless in the Prokofiev just earlier and I think you need to apply uh, exactly that same iron grip in the music. And one last comment, let's not forget about the diminuendo. Once the string section comes in, um, he puts a diminuendo and you're supposed to be playing piano. Now, of course, piano in this context is not that you uh, are playing at a low level energy. No, your energy is full throttle. Fun. Thank you very much for this clip. Uh, let's look at the music. It says sostenuto under the passage. And with sostenuto, I think Elgar means that we are not having an easy way going from one position to the next, from one note to the next, from one phrase to the next. But actually with sostenuto, there is some sort of resistance. And right now, there is no resistance in your playing. You you are very easy going in the playing, which normally I would say, you know, thumbs up, good for you. But because it is sostenuto, I need to have the feeling that a shift like this is actually like lifting a rock. Yeah, It's not just jumping on the rock, but it's lifting this rock. Um, also this shift, this is another shift where you push up. Hello, my name is Megan Hagel. I'm a senior in high school in South Dakota, and I've been working on the third movement of the Sensons Cello Concerto for a while now. Um, I'd love really any advice you have on it, especially about phrasing. So. <laughs> Megan, thank you so much for uh, sending the sans sens. Uh, I enjoy this piece very much, so I'm very happy to always work on it. Uh, one thing that comes to mind is that the last note before the shift needs to be especially articulated. And I feel that when you are um, playing this passage, while whilst you're playing the last note, you're already on your way. 
I'm doing this slow motion now, but that's why it gets a little blurry and we don't get that full articulation. So while it is good to um, articulate all the notes, obviously, uh, it is especially good to articulate the note before the shift and the first one after the shift. So yeah. A tricky one we have here because we only have one note in that position, which is that harmonic A. So maybe you need to take a little bit more time, and I'm talking fractions here, of course, yeah? But you need to take a little bit of time to make that harmonic ring, and then, you know, first you have an upward motion, and then you have a downward motion again. So reversing those motions in itself takes a little bit of time. Now, you're asking about phrasing. I would follow the line of the notes, actually. So I would follow where do we have a high point in the notes and where does it go down again? And then it goes to another high point and it goes down again. And I think, you know, dynamic wise, we can actually just follow that. Yeah. So this is a very simple way of phrasing, but it just um, takes the shape of the notes on paper and you interpret that also with dynamics. Yeah? And that way you already get a very speaking phrase and, and a very nice shape in your sound. The last thing that is worth talking about again is articulation. I also had the feeling we didn't have as much clarity as I would like. And now you can combine articulation and uh, the musical shape that I was talking about. Now, dynamically, we're going up to the F sharp. You can also turn that around. Um, it's up to you. The important thing is that your phrase doesn't stay flat, but actually you have some sort of three-dimensional understanding of your sound, yeah? So that we're not just staying in forte or in piano or in mezzo forte, but within forte, we have a lot of fluctuation and that is going to make uh, your phrase alive. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining in. This was a lot of fun and um, it won't be long until the next masterclass comes up. I already said in a previous post, Haydn D is coming up and uh, I want to make sure that uh, we make this a bigger project because obviously this is such a wonderful piece. If you did enjoy this class, please subscribe, like and share uh, so that other people also can take part in this masterclass movement. I would love to hear in the comments what you guys are working on right now, what is going through your minds, um, what you are um, especially excited about at this time, which is challenging but at the same time, also maybe an opportunity for learning and for growth. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next masterclass. I'll see you soon. Bye.